Boeing has certainly not had a good time in recent years, but 2024 seems to mark the beginning of their steep decline. Throughout this year, the company has constantly made the news, unfortunately not for achievements or breakthroughs, but for a series of problems that have led to significant financial losses and the departure of key leaders. In this video, we'll explore how these ongoing problems have caused such financial strain and why so many of Boeing's top executives have decided to leave. We'll also look at what this could mean for the future of Boeing. Before we delve deeper, if you've ever dreamed of owning your own Starship, today might be as close as you can get. Be sure to check out our exclusive Starship models available through the link in the description. Get ready to own a piece of aerospace history. While companies like SpaceX were celebrating their successes at the beginning of 2024, Boeing was facing one problem after another. Right from the start, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 had a serious issue where a door plug flew off during a flight. This scary incident led to the plane being grounded and checked over by the FAA. It wasn't a great start to the year, and things didn't really get better from there. Then, Boeing's problems kept stacking up. By March, audits showed lots of issues in how Boeing was making its planes, with nearly three dozen checks not up to scratch. Things got so bad that the U.S. Department of Justice even started looking into what was going on. But more than anything, the Starliner program contributed to the overall struggle of Boeing's leadership and financial losses. It all started with the crude launch in June 2024. The Starliner was supposed to launch its first crewed mission earlier, but faced multiple delays. These delays were due to issues with parachutes and flammable tape-on wiring, which raised safety concerns. Each delay added skepticism about Boeing's ability to deliver a reliable spacecraft. Finally, in June 2024, the Starliner launched with astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. However, after docking with the International Space Station, it encountered serious problems like helium leaks and thruster failures. These issues forced NASA and Boeing to extend the mission to address and fix these problems while the spacecraft was docked at the International Space Station. The mission was initially meant to last about a week, but due to ongoing issues, it was extended to more than three months now. The decision to extend came after discovering that fixing the problems in space was more complicated and riskier than expected. These issues were so significant that they considered the safety of the crew if they were to return in the Starliner, leading to a decision to bring the astronauts back on a different spacecraft. Ultimately, NASA and Boeing decided to return the Starliner to Earth without its crew. This decision was made to avoid risking the lives of the astronauts due to the unresolved technical issues. This uncrewed return allowed them to test the spacecraft's re-entry systems without endangering lives. These repeated problems have been costly for Boeing, not just financially but also in terms of its reputation in aerospace. Delays, technical issues, and the decision to return the spacecraft empty have raised doubts about Boeing's engineering and project management capabilities, especially when compared to its competitors like SpaceX. NASA provided substantial funding to both Boeing and SpaceX to develop their respective spacecraft. Boeing received $4.2 billion to develop the Starliner, while SpaceX was awarded $2.6 billion to develop their Crew Dragon spacecraft. These figures reflect NASA's commitment to reinvigorating American spaceflight capabilities and reducing dependency on Russian Soyuz spacecraft, which had become a costly and politically sensitive issue following the retirement of the space shuttle. Despite the substantial investment, Boeing's Starliner has encountered numerous technical challenges that delayed its testing and operational timeline. In contrast, SpaceX has demonstrated more consistent success with its Crew Dragon. SpaceX's Crew Dragon first achieved a significant milestone with its Demo-2 mission, marking the return of human spaceflight launches to American soil on May 30, 2020. This mission successfully transported NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Despite receiving significantly more funding from NASA compared to SpaceX, Boeing has faced considerable challenges to achieve what SpaceX achieved years ago. Many experts have been really critical of Boeing's management lately, especially when it comes to the CEO's pay. 
In 2023, he got nearly $33 million, which was a 45% jump from what he made the year before. This big paycheck included a lot of stock bonuses. People are questioning this because Boeing has been facing a lot of problems, like safety issues and losing money. It seems like the leadership might be more focused on their own financial benefits rather than fixing these ongoing issues at the company. Following the intense criticism, many executives and leaders have been leaving Boeing lately. One notable departure is that of Ted Colbert, the CEO of Boeing's Defense Space and Security Unit, who stepped down immediately. Boeing's Defense Division has experienced substantial financial setbacks, reporting losses of $1.8 billion in 2023 and an additional $762 million in the first half of 2024 alone. These financial strains stem primarily from fixed-price contracts, which, while potentially profitable, have exposed the company to severe financial risks due to unforeseen expenses and inflationary pressures. Notable among these was the contract for the KC-46 aerial tanker and the renovation of two Boeing 747 aircrafts for the Air Force One fleet, which alone resulted in over $2 billion in losses. The company has also been navigating other significant challenges, such as quality control issues revealed by incidents involving its commercial aircraft, like the 737 MAX. The Federal Aviation Administration has imposed strict oversight measures on Boeing following a series of high-profile mishaps, including a mid-air emergency involving a new 737 MAX 9 aircraft, which was found to be missing several critical components. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to make history, achieving one milestone after another in their relentless pursuit of space exploration. But perhaps their biggest achievement so far is developing their own rocket engines. Unlike many other space companies that usually buy engines from third-party manufacturers, SpaceX made a bold decision to create their engines entirely in-house. This is quite different from the traditional approach, where space agencies and private companies often rely on specialized engine makers to supply them with this critical technology. For example, United Launch Alliance, or ULA, uses engines produced by companies like Aerojet Rocketdyne and Blue Origin for their rockets. The ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket, for instance, uses the BE-4 engines made by Blue Origin. Another example is NASA's use of the RS-25 engines, which were originally developed by Rocketdyne for the Space Shuttle program, and are now managed by Aerojet Rocketdyne for the Space Launch System, or SLS. These engines have been used for decades, and NASA continues to depend on them rather than developing a completely new engine from scratch. The reason why most companies and even government agencies like NASA prefer to buy engines from third-party suppliers is that developing rocket engines is an extremely complex, time-consuming, and expensive process. This is why most companies find it easier and more cost-effective to purchase engines that have already been developed and tested by others. However, SpaceX took a different approach. Instead of relying on outside suppliers, they decided to develop their own rocket engines, starting with the Merlin engine, which powers their Falcon 9 rockets, and later the Raptor engine series, which is used for the Starship project. There were several reasons behind this decision. One of the main reasons was that SpaceX wanted full control over the design and production of their engines. By building their engines in-house, SpaceX could make sure that every part of the engine met their exact specifications and could be improved over time to make it more efficient and powerful. This level of control is something that other space companies don't have when they buy engines from third parties. Another important reason why SpaceX chose to develop their engines was to reduce costs. When companies buy engines from other manufacturers, they have to pay a high price, and this cost adds up especially if they need many engines for multiple launches. By building their engines themselves, SpaceX was able to lower the cost of each launch significantly. This has been a big part of why SpaceX can offer much lower prices for launching satellites and other cargo into space compared to other companies. The ability to develop their engines in-house has given SpaceX a huge advantage in the industry, allowing them to launch more missions at a fraction of the cost. However, SpaceX had much bigger plans. They knew that to reach even larger goals, 
like sending humans to Mars or launching very heavy cargo into space, they needed an engine that was even more advanced, powerful, and efficient. This led to the development of the Raptor 3 engine, which brings many improvements and could greatly change how space travel is done. This new engine isn't just a small upgrade. It offers significant changes that make us wonder what SpaceX might be able to achieve in the future with this new technology. One of the main challenges in developing a rocket engine is mixing the fuel with oxygen in just the right way, so that the engine can burn the fuel as efficiently as possible. This process has to happen at extremely high speeds, with a huge amount of fuel being pumped into the engine every second. If this process isn't controlled very precisely, the engine can overheat or even explode, which is why designing and building engines is so difficult and risky. It's estimated that up to 70% of the cost of a rocket is because of the engines. First, the materials used to make rocket engines are very expensive. The inside of a rocket engine gets incredibly hot, often reaching temperatures of more than 3,300 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, regular metals would simply melt, so engineers have to use special metals called superalloys that can handle the heat. These superalloys are not only very costly, but also hard to work with, which makes building the engine even more expensive. Another reason why rocket engines cost so much is that they have to work under very high pressures. When the engine is running, the fuel is pumped into it at a pressure of more than 300 times the pressure we feel at sea level. This means every part of the engine has to be incredibly strong and carefully made to make sure there are no weak spots that could break. Even a small flaw could cause a major failure, so each part has to be manufactured with extreme accuracy. The Raptor 3 engine also uses a fuel called methane, which is different from the fuels used in older rocket engines. Methane has some advantages, like burning cleaner and allowing the engine to be reused more times. However, using methane also makes the engine more complicated to build. For example, the methane fuel has to be pumped into the engine at extremely high pressures, and the equipment that does this, known as turbo pumps, has to be very powerful. These turbo pumps spin incredibly fast, at speeds up to 36,000 times per minute, which creates a lot of stress on the parts. Designing and building pumps that can handle this stress without breaking is one of the most difficult tasks in making a rocket engine. To make the Raptor 3 engine faster and cheaper to produce, SpaceX uses 3D printing technology. 3D printing allows them to create complex engine parts more quickly than traditional manufacturing methods. This means they can build the engine with more precision and at a lower cost. 3D printing also helps them produce parts that would be very hard to make using other techniques, making the whole process more efficient. This efficiency is important for SpaceX, since they need to build a lot of engines for their frequent launches. One of the most important improvements in the Raptor 3 engine is that it's designed to be simpler, with fewer parts than the earlier versions like Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. Fewer parts mean there are fewer chances for something to go wrong, which makes the engine more reliable during space missions. Musk often says that making things simpler is the best way to improve them. And that's what SpaceX has done with Raptor 3 by removing unnecessary components and designing it in a way that's more efficient. SpaceX is planning to use the Raptor 3 engine in their future Starship missions. The engine has already been tested and showed impressive power, producing up to 280 metric tons of thrust while being lighter than the Raptor 2 engine. However, SpaceX is still running more tests to make sure the engine is ready to be used in real missions. Once it's ready, Raptor 3 will replace the older engines on SpaceX's rockets. In the long run, Musk wants to increase the power of the Raptor 3 engine even more, potentially reaching 330 metric tons of thrust. This improvement will help SpaceX launch heavier payloads into space and make their Starship rocket fully reusable. SpaceX is also working on building more launch towers to support more frequent Starship launches, aiming to make space travel much cheaper and more efficient in the future. If you've watched this far, we've got a special surprise just for you. We're offering a limited number of highly realistic Starship models, exclusively for our most loyal viewers. Since you've stuck around this long, it's clear you're dedicated, so why not reward yourself? Head to the link in the description and grab your Starship model before they're all gone. Don't miss out. 
it's the perfect collector's item for true space fans like you. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.